The charge of the Chief Justice is Commission on Professionalism. It's to enhance professionalism among North Carolina lawyers, judges, and law students. Professionalism is the rekindling and nurturing of those embedded values that brought each of us to the bar. I believe very strongly that everybody wants to be professional. We wouldn't be in this profession if we didn't. But uh, I think we all agreed, and, and I certainly agreed with them, that, that there was a really desperate need for such a commission. The Chief Justice Commission is aspirational. And I remember using that time and again. It is an aspirational endeavor. It's uh, how to encourage lawyers to do better than the absolute minimum requirements. Essi quam videri. Essi quam videri. Essi quam videri. Essi quam videri. To be rather than to seem. Beginning in the late 1980s, the American Bar Association began to give renewed attention to the state of professional practice among American lawyers. The Conference of Chief Justices responded in 1996 by conducting a study and formulating a national action plan for lawyer conduct and professionalism, which was adopted on January 21, 1999. The action plan called upon the highest state appellate courts to take a leadership role in evaluating the contemporary needs of the legal community with respect to lawyer professionalism and coordinating activities of the bench, bar, and the law schools in meeting those needs. One of the specific efforts that state judiciary should undertake was the establishment of a Commission on Professionalism or other agency under the direct authority of the appellate court of highest jurisdiction that undertakes the task of promoting lawyer professionalism as its principal mission. In North Carolina, Bill King and Jerry Parnell, who were leaders of the North Carolina State Bar at this time, were aware of the action plan and thought this would be a good idea to bring to North Carolina lawyers. They discussed the idea with then Chief Justice Burley Mitchell after studying the organization and programs of already established professionalism entities around the United States. Bill and Jerry were successful in their efforts to persuade Chief Justice Mitchell with the result that in 1998, Chief Justice Mitchell issued an order establishing the Chief Justice's Commission on Professionalism. Recently, the founders of the commission gathered to discuss how the CJCP got started. The, the core impulse to form a professionalism commission, as I understood it two decades ago, was this. The state bar does a good job of defining what is the floor, what is the minimum behavioral limits that we can put up with and lawyers still keep a law license. It's not enough for the legal profession to define itself by what's the least we can put up with, what's the absolute bottom that we ought to uh, try to encourage lawyers to think about a taller ceiling room and to, to raise our, our focus from the floor to something closer to the ceiling. I had seen the interaction of of uh, lawyers amongst themselves within the trial bar, and I always felt there was something of a lack of civility there. And the Georgia State Bar had a program on professionalism, and I just was overwhelmed by it. It was just really good. So um, I started thinking about that, and I had gotten to know uh, the then president of the State Bar in Georgia, Linda Klein, who later became a president of the American Bar Association, uh, and I talked to Linda, she and I had become very good friends, and we talked about the program. She introduced me to the people in Georgia who were primarily responsible for it and invited me to come down and, and watch it. 
they, the Georgia folks called it the Chief Justice Commission on Professionalism, and we said, well, why, why don't we start with our own Chief Justice, who happened to be Chief Justice Burley Mitchell. And so we called uh, Justice Mitchell up, Chief Justice Mitchell, and said, can we all come over and talk to you about a program that we're trying to institute uh, within the state bar, within the legal community in North Carolina? And Justice Mitchell said, of course. And uh, so we came up and we, <laughs> I remember it very well because uh, the introduction, I guess I made it, I do remember I said, uh, Mr. Chief Justice, how would you like to have a commission named for you? And you don't have to do a thing, we'll do all the work. And he read back and said, that sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> At about the time that uh, Bill and Jerry came to me, uh, Everyone in the profession, all the senior lawyers, I think, were concerned about a decline in professionalism and especially a decline in, in common civility. I think we all agreed, and, and I certainly agreed with them, that, that there was a really desperate need for such a commission. After a wide-ranging search, Melvin F. Wright, Jr. of Winston-Salem was selected to be the first executive director of the CJCP, as it became known. The CJCP carries out its work with the support of its members, who are selected by the Chief Justice and who represent the following constituencies, practicing attorneys, trial court judges, appellate judges, law faculty, non-lawyer members of the public, as well as the president of the North Carolina State Bar as an ex-officio member of the commission. It has been 18 years since Mel Wright accepted the offer to lead and bring to life a commission on professionalism. When I first met with the selection committee and, and included these fine gentlemen, uh, at some point Jerry Parnell said to me, he said, well Mel, we want somebody who's uh, got a little bit of lawyer and a little bit of preacher in them. We think you'll need that. And I smiled and I said, well, Jerry, my mother always wanted me to be a minister, so maybe that would make her happy if I do this. Uh, and so I started out with, as they said, relying on Georgia and Florida and other states that already had commissions. We would have been the sixth. When the first commission was formed, uh, Chief Justice Mitchell said, the, the person we want to be the executive director is somebody who can be a vicar of lawyer professionalism in North Carolina. And that informed the hiring committee. We interviewed a number of people and we immediately seized on uh, Mel Wright's credentials. He seemed to have the right stuff. And I think he has been the kind of vicar of professionalism that Chief Justice Mitchell told us about. And my sense was that we needed, we didn't need some academic. What we needed was somebody who was a good lawyer, I mean, who, who was academically sound as a lawyer, but who had been out in the trenches, who had had to face other lawyers who at times were unpleasant. Uh, and deal with sharp practices of other lawyers. In other words, we needed an experienced, really experienced lawyer who'd spent a lot of time in trial and appellate cases. And I was really anxious that we would find someone of that stature uh, who would be willing to take it because I knew it was gonna involve, whoever took it was gonna involve a cut in income. That was considered the first thing that the commission did was to get the secured leave policy in, adopted and in place. As mentioned by Mel Wright, as its initial project, the CJCP developed and implemented a secured leave policy for North Carolina lawyers. Through an order signed by the Chief Justice, all North Carolina lawyers may secure vacation time up to three weeks per year that must be honored by the courts in scheduling all matters that the designating attorneys have pending before them. Some lawyers can misunderstand anything. <laughs> right after we created it, I got a letter from a lawyer just real hot saying, you cannot tell me when I can take my vacations. That is just unconstitutional. So I wrote him back and said, look, you can take 
52 weeks a year vacation if you want to. But in order to be sure there won't, you won't have a case calendared on when you want to take vacation, this guarantees you protection from that. Other early activities of the CJCP included the adoption of a professionalism creed for North Carolina lawyers and in 2000, the CJCP created its historical video series, consisting of video interviews with distinguished lawyers, judges, and professionals across the state to preserve their thoughts and commentary on professionalism issues and its evolution throughout the years. This video series is available on the CJCP website and will soon be available on the CJCP's dedicated YouTube channel. In 2001, the CJCP awarded the first Chief Justice's Professionalism Award. This prestigious award seeks to recognize North Carolina lawyers who have exemplified principles of professionalism in all aspects of their careers. To date, 26 outstanding North Carolina lawyers and judges have received this prestigious award. Throughout the years, the CJCP has also offered assistance to and provided programming for North Carolina law schools. One of the ways it has done this is through grant making. Beginning in 2003, the CJCP began providing financial assistance to support professionalism initiatives through grant making. The first recipients were North Carolina law schools. Notably, over the past 15 years, the CJCP has awarded almost $400,000 to organizations such as North Carolina's law schools, the Equal Access to Justice Commission, the North Carolina Bar Association, and local bar organizations. At that point, we had five law schools, and there was in excess of $50,000. Mr. Parnell said at some point, he said, well, I think we ought to make a grant to the law schools. And we talked about that. And we talked about the fact that that would be a great thing for them to emphasize professionalism even more than they do already with a $10,000 grant that they could use to develop professionalism programs for their school. Seeking to provide assistance to North Carolina judges, the CJCP formed the Judicial Response Committee. When requested, this group of highly respected members of the legal community responds to unwarranted attacks in the media on the judiciary. One of the contributions that, that we haven't mentioned that I think has been valuable was the uh, creation and activation of a Judicial Response Committee of the of the commission and the purpose of that was to respond quickly uh, when judges are unfairly attacked or lawyers but primarily judges they can't speak up and defend themselves and it's um, it, we made the decision when we created it we wouldn't get involved in political campaigns and political barbs thrown back and forth but it was <clears throat> it was for when a judge is clearly doing his or her duty as required by law and is the sort of thing I had in mind when we created when we created the Commission on Professionalism that we not only would encourage people to be professional but we would protect those who were. Another significant project undertaken by the CJCP was the formation of the Professionalism Support Initiative. This initiative serves as a confidential peer intervention program to improve professionalism among lawyers and judges. As part of its mission to serve all lawyers in North Carolina, the CJCP has also taken its programming on the road by co-sponsoring with Lawyers Mutual, Professionalism CLE, and luncheon programs at local North Carolina Judicial District bars. 
Over the past 15 years, the CJCP has held these programs in 39 out of 44 North Carolina judicial districts, totaling 49 programs. In 2018, the CJCP is scheduled to sponsor six programs throughout the state, from Asheville to Newburgh. All of it can be made better if you go the right way about it. If you try to treat your adversary on the other side with respect. If you can try to elevate the conduct of everybody involved in the situation, it makes it better for our whole profession. Well, we do good stuff every day as a profession. We need to keep doing that and emphasizing to new lawyers coming into the profession how important that is because it'll make their lives better and the people they represent better. This concludes our review of the highlights of the first 20 years of the Chief Justice's Commission on Professionalism.